Hey everyone, Mr. Fransky here. Um, today we're going to be looking at an implicit differentiation problem that AP has provided. Uh, this is actually going to be the first full AP problem that we've done this year. Uh, we tried to do some motion problems where we couldn't do certain parts of it, but this one we can do actually top to bottom as long as you've watched the uh, implicit um, derivative video that we had before this one, so 3.7a. Uh, so this you got on your worksheet. Uh, if you want to try it yourself first, um, please do. Uh, but you'll notice that AP always kind of puts these layers of complexity in there. So uh, the first part, they actually give you the answer. You have to show it. So they just want to see, can you do the implicit differentiation to get to this point? And then they start asking some really high-level questions about implicit differentiation. So it's like, um, if the x-coordinate is 1, find, you got to find the points, and then you got to find the tangent line, and then you have to find all the x-coordinates where the tangent line is vertical. So they're, they're layering a lot of skills here, and a lot of these are actually pre-calculus skills. Um, but they want to see, can you do it, and also can you apply the calculus to find those tangent lines. So if you'd like to try this on your own, it's on your worksheet, the parts are split up for you, um, and then we can try it together. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in and, and do these problems. And then I've got a, the graph at the end on Desmos, we can actually check our work. So hopefully it'll all work out. So first here. We got this curve, we're going to show that dy dx is equal to, to this function. The reason they do this is because if you get the first part wrong, the rest of the problem would be very difficult and be very difficult to grade. So uh, if you don't know how to do this, you can just use it in the later parts of the problem, but they're just asking you to confirm that this is indeed true. So let's take a look. Uh, so let's see, we have xy squared minus x cubed y equals 6. So we're going to have to be using product rule on both of these things. So uh, derivative of the first part is going to be 1 times y squared, right? Derivative of just one part of it, leave the other part alone. Plus, this time I leave the x alone, do the derivative of y squared, which is 2y, y prime, right? Because we have to chain on all the y's, because y is a function of x, and we're deriving with respect to x. So then we have minus, going to use parentheses here. So we'll have 3x squared times y, because we leave the y alone. Then this time I leave the x cubed alone, and I do the derivative of y, which is just y prime. And that's equal to 0, because the derivative of a constant is 0. Now let's distribute a little bit and get our, our y primes together. So it looks like we have y squared plus 2xy y prime minus 3x squared y minus x cubed y prime equal to 0. Now we'll gather and uh, move everything else to the other side. So let's see here. We have a, if we pull a y prime out, I'm left with uh, 2xy minus x cubed. Looking like the bottom here. This is good. Equal to uh, 3x squared y minus y squared. So I got everything with the y primes on one side, everything else on the other. So if we divide now, we get y prime equal to 3x squared y minus y squared divided by 2xy minus x cubed. So I usually put a check mark there to show, look, I showed it. I've done it. Okay, so we got our y prime equal to this guy on the right. So that's going to give us the slope of this curve or this graph at any point. I'll probably slip up and call it a function at least once, but this is definitely not a function. Okay. So now we're looking at this curve still, and we're trying to find the points on the curve whose x-coordinate is 1. So let's do that first. So I know x is equal to 1. I'm finding them on the curve. So I'm not using the slope for this. I'm finding using the actual graph for it. So I'm just going to replace the x's with 1s, and we're going to solve for y. So we're going to have 1 times y squared minus 1 times y is equal to 6. All right, well, that's y squared minus y equal to 6. This is a quadratic. Even though it's a y, it's just a quadratic. So I'm going to move the 6 to the other side. So we got y squared minus y minus 6 equals 0. That looks very factorable, right? You could maybe use completing the square or quadratic formula on this, but I sure want to factor that. So we're going to have y and y. Multiply to 6, add to 1, 3 and 2, right? Looks so like we got to go down 3 and up 2 to get to that negative 1y. So it looks like my options are y could be 3 or y could be negative 2. So my two points are um, ne uh, 1, 3 and 1, negative 2. All right. Oops, sorry about that. So we've got our two points. What we want to do now is we have to figure out what the slope is. So we have the slope equation right here. So I'm going to do the uh, dy dx evaluated at 1, 3 is going to be 3 times 1 times 3, because 1 squared is 1, minus y squared, which is 9, divided by 2xy. That's 2 times 1 times 3. That's 6, minus x cubed, which is 1. So it looks like we have, what, 9 minus 9? Hey, it's 0. 
It's like we have a horizontal tangent at this point. Top is 0, the bottom is, um, what, 6 minus 1, which is 5. So I can write 0 over 5, which is 0. Because 0 on the top, you got 0. So if the slope is 0, you could put that into slope-intercept form, right? Uh, uh, Point-slope form, excuse me. So that would be y minus 3 is equal to 0 times x minus 1. That really shows you know that you're putting it into point-slope form using um, a derivative. But if the slope is 0, it's a horizontal line. So this should just be y equals 3. And you can see if 0 times this guy will be 0, add the 3, y equals 3. That's your first line. At 1, negative 2, let's do the same thing. So we're going to do dy dx evaluated at 1, negative 2. So that's going to be, let's see, 3 times uh, 1 squared is still 1, times negative 2, minus y squared. Negative 2 squared is 4, so we subtract 4, divided by 2xy, 2 times 1 times negative 2, minus x cubed, that's minus 1. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, minus 4 more is negative 10. Then on the bottom, we have negative 4 minus 1. That's negative 5. That looks like it's 2. So our slope is 2. So we're going to have y plus 2, using this point right here, is equal to the slope 2 times x minus 1. There we go. Let's graph these and see what we get. Keep them. So let's see here. You got it right here. It's kind of a very funky looking graph, right? It looks like we have like three different functions almost, right? This guy would have to split right there in order to make it work. So, let's graph. Let's see, we have y equals 3. y equals 3. Sure looks like it's tangent right at this spot right here. Then the other one, we have y plus 2. y plus 2 equal to 2 times x minus 1. x minus 1. Ah, good. I always get nervous when I graph these. I'm like, gosh, I hope it worked out. <laughs> so we have this point right here, this 1, 2. Right, one negative two, and it's tangent there, and we also have that horizontal tangent there. And that's all the points where x is equal to one, right? We have two spots where that happens, and that's it. So let's look at part three. Just scooting right along. So now they want us to find the x point, x coordinate of each point on the curve where the tangent line is vertical. This is actually a more difficult problem than it, than it looks. So what we're trying to do, switch back to my happy green here, I don't want to use that red. So we're trying to find a vertical tangent line. That means that our slope is undefined. The slope is undefined means dy dx is undefined. The only way to make a fraction undefined is if you're dividing by 0. So we know that 2xy minus x cubed is equal to 0. Anytime you're solving something like this, good idea to try to factor as much as you can. It looks like they share an x in common, so I have x times 2y minus x squared equals 0. So we have two options, either x equals 0, or 2y minus x squared equals 0. Well, x equals 0 seems like a pretty simple, simple thing we can use. They just want the x-coordinate, but we do still have to make sure that it works out um, with the curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug x equals 0 into the actual curve, just like we did with the x equals 1, and we found the y-coordinates. So I'm going to plug 0 in there to see if there's actually a point on the graph that, that has x equals 0. So we plug in 0 on the left, we get 0 minus 0, equal to 6. What's weird about that? Well, 0 is never equal to 6. So x equals 0 actually has no point on the graph. And you can tell that just by doing the algebra, because there's no way 0 is ever going to equal 6. Check it out. At 0, we actually have an asymptote, right? x is never 0. x is never equal to 0. So there's no point on the graph that has that vertical tangent. So our other option is that 2y minus x squared is equal to 0. So it's a little bit more complicated, but it's not too bad. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve for y. You could solve for x as well, but then you would have to do a square root with a plus or minus. I don't really want to deal with that. So we have 2y equal to x squared. That means y is equal to x squared over 2. So if y is ever equal to x squared over 2, we should have uh, vertical tangents. And actually, if you graph that on the graph, If you graph it on the graph, x squared over 2 is going to be like a very wide parabola. If it intersects the graph at all, it should be at a vertical tangent. It looks like that's going to happen right here. So you can actually graph it, uh, x squared over 2. If that intersects the graph, looks like it does at this point right here, that's going to be our vertical tangent. Obviously, you can't graph this, right? This is a, an AP problem, but um, I just want to show that that intersection point should be where this happens, where y is equal to x squared over 2. Get rid of that one. 
Okay. So back to our happy green. So if y is equal to x squared over 2, then we're going to have these vertical tangents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub that in for the y's right here. This may seem complex, but all you're doing is just using the information you have. You know that y, 2y minus x squared has got to be 0, so 2y has got to be x squared, y has got to be x squared over 2. We're trying, basically solving a system. We're using y equals x squared over 2 and this equation right here to try to figure out what x and y have to be. So we're going to substitute. We're using substitution. So we have x times x squared over 2 squared. So I'm just replacing the y's with x squared over 2. Minus x cubed times x squared over 2. It's got to be equal to 6. Okay. All we want is the x-coordinate. So hopefully this is going to not be terrible. So let's see. x squared squared is x to the fourth. So I have x times x to the fourth. 2 squared is 4. Minus x to the fifth over 2 is equal to 6. Well, it looks like we're going to have all x to the fifths. This isn't so bad. So we have x to the fifth over 4 minus x to the fifth over 2 has got to be equal to 6. Let's get a common denominator here so we can combine these. Looks like this will be 2x to the fifth over 4. So x to the fifth minus 2x to the fifth is negative x to the fifth. I'm going to come over here. Sorry, this is not great space usage. So we have negative x to the fifth over 4 is equal to 6. Multiply by 4, negative x to the fifth is equal to 24. Multiply by negative 1, we have x to the fifth equals negative 24. x has got to be the fifth root of negative 24. Oh, wasn't that fun. <laughs> so that should be a vertical tangent. That should actually be the equation. So if I graph x equals... I don't know if I can do fifth root on here. You probably can, but I'm going to do it as just uh, 20, negative 24 to the 1 fifth power. And there it is. Look at that. We have a vertical tangent that touches right at that point. And I kind of been curious now. It should be at the point where uh, we equal x squared over 2. So we kind of had this before. Yep. And we see they all intersect right at that point. We have the vertical tangent, and it's right where y is equal to x squared over 2. Any other point on the graph that intersected with that black line should also be a vertical tangent. That's just kind of bonus information. You have to know that. Okay. Well, wasn't that fun? Um, these AP problems are tough. So if you struggled with this, it's okay. Uh, we'll do lots of them over the course of the year. Um, but hopefully you were able to at least get through parts of this problem, hopefully at least the first part. Uh, and that's all I've got for you in this video. Love you guys. That's why I'm here. Have a great day.